so happy that Holy Spirit actually, you know, the way he makes everything easy for us. So yesterday when sister called, it was almost 10.45, 11 o'clock. And I said, sister, I'm not prepared. Suddenly you're asking me to share the word tomorrow. And immediately Holy Spirit reminded me what Princess Bola preached. She said, you're born ready. So that was the voice that was ringing in my mind. I said, yes, Lord, it's not about me getting prepared. It's about you coming and speaking in this place. So when I was... Um, you know, walking back home, I said, like, Lord, which is the topic I had to uh, speak tomorrow? And uh, this entire week, I've been meditating on Galatians chapter. So let us just uh, read Galatians uh, and, you know, and it was so uh, surprising when, you know, when you sit with Holy Spirit and you read how the revelations open up. And uh, I really enjoyed reading Galatians because I experienced something where Paul was, like, so bold to write this stuff. When the revelations open up, we really come to an understanding of how could Paul write such bold uh, letters to these kind of churches. So let us read from Galatians. Before that, let's just uh, pray. Uh, ho thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place, Lord. Lord, we commit each and every one into your hands, Lord. And as you prepare our hearts to receive the word, I pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, that this word will be not just received in us, but then it will be received in our spirit and inscribed in our heart, and we will put it to practice, Father God. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So when I was preparing for this message, uh, the first thing I could hear was freedom in the spirit. So, and the songs were like, wow, <laughs> I should thank Holy Spirit and brother, how he led everything was like half my message was there in the screen. I was so joyful because I didn't have time to really pray about the word, what I'm sharing today. I said, Lord, um, usually we prepare the message, we pray, and somewhere God gives us a confirmation, and then we come and we speak here. But last night, I was so tired. Yesterday, full day, I worked, and I said, Lord, I don't know. Tomorrow, I'm going to go depend on you, and I, I'm sure that you will come and you will speak. And when he was singing the songs, I was so joyful because the Holy Spirit is awesome. You know, he's the one who protects us whenever we are low. And I was like, Lord, I want you to speak. If you're not going, I'm not going. And uh, I, like, I also had a confirmation today. It is like you know, in the morning, um, I had a dream last night. So even that dream came into the alignment of what the word I'm going to share. So in this dream, I'm seeing like, you know, the vegetables in my house. It was very funny, okay? The vegetables in my house started walking and getting out of my house. I'm like, I don't know, I, I'm dreaming this and my neighbor is like, you know, shouting at me and he's like, hello, your vegetables are walking out of your house. And I was like, I got up from the dream, I laughed and I said, God, what kind of a dream is this? His language is all mind blowing, you know. And I said, this has nothing to do with, you know, the message and everything. And I'm still thinking about the dream. I prayed about it. I said, God, I don't know what's the interpretation for this. And when I was getting ready, I hear this, like, you know, uh, freedom in the spirit. That was, I was just, you know, meditating on the word I'm going to share today. So freedom in the spirit was something then. I heard this uh, voice. It's like, you might be living, yet you might be dead. That's a scripture. Like, you know, we're all, when we don't have Christ in us, when we don't have the spirit of God in us, though we are living, we're all dead. That's the scripture where he says, you know, you're all dead to sin while you were born, until you're reborn in the spirit. And then Holy Spirit says, don't walk, be a walking vegetable. <laughs> Let's say that to our neighbors. Say, don't be a walking vegetable. <laughs> it's so true, you know. And so many things, it got connected to me. I used to like, uh, 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 like you know, uh, like when I, when I get a word, I start connecting with things I used to like, you know, uh, come across. So I was like actually thinking, yes, there is something about the co concept of zombies. How many of you heard? I don't watch horror films, but you know, this word zombie is always like, Everybody keeps saying to don't be a zombie, you know. So I was like, yes, that, that word is actually in the Bible. They didn't mention it as zombie, but we were actually like zombies. We were alive, but we were still dead to sin. And yeah, I was like, yeah, I was still like a vegetable. We go and we start preaching to people and we say like, you know, uh, this person is not moving. He's like a vegetable. That means he has life, but he's not living. We can, that can happen to every one of us. We can have the word of God. If you don't have a revelation, we can still be a walking vegetable. We can just move around saying, sharing the word. But if I don't have a revelation about the word, I cannot give the, the full potential of the word to someone. I cannot really share the spirit to someone. And you are free in the spirit only when you have a revelation in the spirit. And when I was connecting that, I was like so happy. I was like, God, there is so much of revelation that opens up. You, you open up your mind to a different realm altogether. And then I, I, I was like, you know, connecting it to something else where um, when, when, you're, when you're not born in the spirit, it is like you are still living like your old self. 
until you have an encounter with Christ and then you're born in the spirit that was like God was speaking to me he said I'm giving you a second chance sometimes we all have this in mind I'm sure every hundred person who's who's a human being who has the right sense of mind would have asked God God give me another chance to live we want to rewind so that we can fix things up so when I was thinking on that God is God started speaking to me and he said you know that is the second chance you get when you are born in the spirit when you get baptized when you get the experience of salvation when you when you decide to give your life to Christ that is a born again experience and that is a second chance you get to relive your life and then you know it is like you relive your life in Christ and you get to live like Christ and you give full access to God and sometimes you know I, I was baptized twice you know first time when I got baptized it was because my parents like asked me to get baptized and I did not know the full meaning about it I knew that I'm going to receive Christ yes I said the salvation prayer I received Christ but there was no change in me because I did not give, a, give him my heart voluntarily. It was because somebody else told me to. And I did not experience the freedom in, in, in my spirit, you know. It was like I was free in my mind. I used to always think, okay, I've given my life to Jesus, you know. All my sins will be forgiven. And it was more like a passport for me to go to heaven. And that, that is what I was thinking in my mind. But I did not understand that you don't really need a passport to go to heaven. You're all, always a citizen of heaven. You actually need to form Christ inside of you so that, you know, you live a life in the world which is a full of freedom and you experience the freedom in Christ and you become a revelation, walking revelation to people around us. And when I had this revelation, it was like, yes, through all this while, we are all like, you know, going and trying to share the gospel. We are going to share it to the neighbors. We do so many things. We put in our full effort. But you know, out of 100 souls, one or two get saved. Why it's not happening in full percent, you know? I used to meditate and I used to ask God. And Holy Spirit said, did you even ask me, do I have to go share this word to that person? Most of the time, we are not prepared. It was, I'm, I'm an example. I did get baptized, but I was not prepared that time. I did not have Christ inside me, of me. I did not have a revelation uh, of God. I did not have a relationship with God. I did not have intimacy with God. So I was like a walking zombie, though I had salvation experience. And it was difficult for me then, you know, when I understood the moment you give your life to God and you start walking in the word, opening up revelations, and when you understand that, personalizing it, and what happens is it stirs up a hunger to know more, God, more, of, more of God. And you end up saying, God, this is not enough. Your spirit person gets enlarged and you are like always hungry for the word. If you're not hungry for the word, sorry, boss, I just have to say sorry. It is not working out. And, and somebody... Who, if I can say that I am full of God and it's never that way. God can never be full inside of you because he is an everlasting God. The revelations are always bubbling up like a river. River doesn't stop. It doesn't dry up. So it was like everything started opening up. I was so happy like, Lord, I need to have freedom in the spirit. When I have freedom in the spirit, what happens is I walk with the Holy Spirit. I have an intimacy with God through the spirit of God because Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ. You know, the word of God clearly says in Galatians, he says, Jesus Christ is the spirit of God, the son of God and the spirit of God given unto us so that we can walk in a lifestyle of heaven where there is full of freedom. I don't feel guilty about anything. If I don't share the word, it's, it's like I'm not feeling guilty because Holy Spirit said until that person is prepared I don't allow you to go, the, go and share the word you're wasting your time in vain the word of God clearly says unless and until and unless the father allows that person to come to Christ nobody else can come it is not by my effort I can go preaching a full day like you know message after message to a person and say come on accept Christ there is freedom until and unless I don't demonstrate freedom how will that person come to Christ but today I'm, I'm so sure that God has, uh, you know, taken me up to different levels where I am really enjoying the freedom in Christ. There's so much, I, sometimes I don't really sit, kneel down and pray to God, but I talk to God. My relationship is moved from a prayerful life to a conversation with God. God has become more real to me in my life. So this entire week, it was surprising how uh, I had a conversation with uh, uh, one of the person I knew. And, you know, that person was like uh, really surprised how I got spiritual. And that person knows me from when I'm a child. So they were like confused, how is this, you know, you are being a slave to God because there are certain things I was not able to accept it. I said, you know, this is not biblical. I'm not going to accept this. I'm, I want to change. I, my heart is more of like, you know, it's, it's tuned to forgive people, tuned to love people, to give. It is totally different. You know, I'm enjoying the freedom. So this person said, that means you are a slave for God. 
And I said, that's how you understand. Because you don't have a relationship with your father, you feel that you're a slave to your father. But if you have a relationship to, with him as a father, you are in love with your father. You are in total freedom. When I go into my house, I don't have to behave like a slave with my father. Because I know him as a father. If, if you, if you're, you know, living a, uh, uh, what to say, you're living abroad and you've not uh, had much time to spend with your parents, when you come back, for some time you'll feel that, you know, you are like a guest in the house. But if you're living there for entire life, for example, look at Jeremy, look at the kids, how they behave at home. So that I started behaving like that with father, you know, and everything and everything I started talking to God. I said, Lord, I'm like, you know, when I'm like down, I will just fight with him. When I'm happy, I just simply keep shouting, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And my mom is like, you know, this girl has lost her mind. I am just like a child. The moment I started experiencing that, you know, God became so real to me and his voice became audible. And, you know, every time I read a word, the revelations doesn't take time to open up. Everything connects. It's like I'm, I'm already in a different world altogether. And that is what makes me to get into that world. Sometimes, you know, it happens to all of us. When we watch a movie, I watch movies, you know, because I'm from that industry. Like, I worked with film industry. So I, I, when I was watching movies, God started speaking to me, me even more. Because I don't get much of time uh, to c interact with people other than my, uh, you know, when I have work. Otherwise, when I'm sitting at home, I just take up my phone. I, I just click on some, pro you know, the name has to uh, really touch my spirit, otherwise I don't watch anything and everything. If the name like Transformers, I'm a big fan of Transformers, okay, I like Bumblebee. So, I don't know, that it really uh, blew my mind off. We all think, how can a car transform like that? When that can happen, when we're really seeing in, in our eyes that this and all is really happening, and I'm sure in the coming days there will be a moving car like that, you know, like a robot. When that can happen, why can't I be transformed in word. You know, I started digging deeper in the word. I, I said, Lord, the word clearly says, you know, only by the revelations you get transformed. Like last week, Abby preached, he said, only a revelation can sustain you in the realm of the spirit. So I said, Lord, I don't want to come out of the spirit realm. Because when I come out of the spirit realm, it's difficult for me to connect to people. I start falling sick, you know. I've had this experience off late. Like when I started seeing the realm of the spirit, I am very happy there and comfortable because that is my place where I used to live. I, I have been a spirit being. When I come here, it is like when I transform to this, the normal realm, what happens is my flesh takes control. You happen to start questioning everything. End of the day, you even question God. It, it so happened when I was chatting with that person and the way they are like, you know, they're filled with the worldly knowledge. When they text, they ask you everything in a question mark. It's like, how is this possible? Have you seen God? How can you believe in this? It is all, you know, man-made. I said, okay, if everything is man-made, you know, you need to first believe in the word. If you don't believe in the word, then everything becomes a question mark. Then I said, maybe I was like that before, but when I had a salvation experience, when I heard the voice of God, I know he's more real to me than even you, my, even my breath. I'm, I'm living this only because of his breath inside of me. From where did this breath came from? The word of God clearly says it's the breath of God, it's the spirit of God. And you know, Holy Spirit become real in me. And when I, in, during the time of the conversation, I could, uh, you know, I was trying to convince that person and immediately I stopped. I said, why am I selling my God to somebody who cannot understand, you know? I, I don't want to sell God. That happens, that comes when you experience freedom in the spirit. Otherwise you will feel guilty. Oh my God, I did not even convince that person. But there's a thin line and, you know, it's the wisdom of God that allows you to stop and you say, don't waste your time. Because, you know, he, this person will not, you cannot explain light to a person who is blind. And you cannot save a person who doesn't want to be saved. So why are you wasting time? And there are people like that in the world. I have, ex I have met people who will say, I am more happy with Satan than God. Yes, because they... For them, Satan is very easy to get, you know, and the word of God in Proverbs clearly says, when you find, when you are in, in search of evil, it gets you. You don't get it, it gets you. That one word of saying, you know, I am in, in search of Satan, it just gets you because he's just waiting. He, he is desperate. And, you know, when he is so desperate, why can't we get, you know, we get desperate for God. We need to walk in that realm where we get desperate for God to be saved from the worldly style. And it's a two different realm when we live in the spirit and when we live in the flesh. And uh, let's read the word first. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from voice version. Listen, I'm going to explain how this all works. When a minor inherits the estate from his parents, though he is the owner of everything, he is the same as a slave. 
until the day set by his father. The minor is subject to the authorities and guardians whom his father put in charge. This is like that with, with us. There was a time when we were like children held under the elementary power of this world. When the right time arrived, God sent his son into this world to free those who, just like him, were subject to the law. See, it was like, you know, God, Jesus was born to Mary, who was from a Levite family. Why he had to be born as a human is because he wanted to break the power of sin. Only in the flesh you can break the power of sin. So he, wa he wanted, like, you know, God sent a son in the form of flesh so that he can break the curse of sin in flesh. He lived a life, life without sin you know that was he lived a human life he was tempted the way we were tempted he he, he went on uh, like you know every challenges in life he worked for his family and uh, like uh, like what to say like he even uh, had to take care of the family take care of the parents he was a, he was he was a proper carpenter and then when his time arrived see everything has a time for us until the time arrives we have to be in preparation we cannot escape even for paul he had an encounter with jesus until then he was so much under the uh, like you know impression of uh, a teacher of law he was he was boasting about it if you read he says nobody else could be found so intelligent like him in the in, in, in explaining the law in teaching the law but when he had an encounter what happened everything was washed off everything and immediately the encounter means it's not that you're encountering God when you read the word of God it clearly says when you encounter God you encounter yourself and here there's one particular word which says during the time before you knew God you were slaves to power that are not God's at all but now you are just beginning to know the one true God actually he's showing you completely that uh, He's showing you completely how completely he knows you. So it is like you are having an encounter about yourself. It is like when you have an encounter, where we all pray about encounters. Actually, these encounters does not reveal God to us. It reveals us to us. And that's when I, I've had an experience where, you know, I was just crying out for God and I said, Lord, I need an encounter. I want to see you face to face. And one night it so happened that I was just sleeping and the days I used to stay awake thinking God will walk into my room, you know, it's, it's, I was desperate for God. And, um, and I just forgot about that. I started continuing with my daily work and one night I just slept and suddenly my bed was, it jumped up like that. I was thrown out of my bed. I'm like, okay, what is happening? I thought maybe, you know, the plywood or something is wrong with the bed. And suddenly my body started vibrating. It vibrated so hard. I could not stop. I thought I'm getting some kind of a fever or I did not understand what kind, what it was. And I understood that there was a strong presence of God. My stomach was like stirring up. I would have thrown up. It was like I was going on a roller coaster ride without a safety belt. You know how that, how scary that can be. My heart is pounding. I can hear my heart really beating outside. It was like my heart was taken out and it's just beating in my hand, you know, like that. I'm like, I do not know how to react. And I knew God's presence was in my room. The first thing I said, like, God, please go away because I cannot face you. I will die. The energy, the power, and the presence of God is so strong that we, if not prepared, we will really have a hard time facing God. So I was like, my God, this encounter really revealed about how prepared I am to meet him. And I knew that when Isaiah faced him, he fell down face uh, on the ground because the, the energy, the presence is so pure. It is so pure. No flesh can even boast or stand in front of the presence of God. I was like, oh my God, please. I really said that, Lord, please go away from here. I am not prepared to see you face to face. I am going to die because the energy was so strong. My body was vibrating and it went on for three hours. I was sweating, my bed was fully wet. And I'm like, I just got up and I started weeping and crying. I said, Lord, we all, have this urge but how do how much do we know about our father that he is so pure so holy he's so powerful and when you really want to meet that power you need to be having the velocity to carry that power in your in your in your in your in yourself otherwise when you are in your flesh it is diff you cannot it it, can, it it just doesn't happen that way i was like oh my god i got up and i prayed i said lord prepare me more i need to know more about my father if i'm not prepared to know more about my father i cannot live in this earth like you know in freedom i will have guilty thoughts all the time and you will not be able to discern about your thoughts and the voice of holy spirit because sometimes even the devil speaks scriptures he, sometimes when i'm not able to share the word to someone it'll be like that you know if 
uh, earlier when I got saved, I wanted to jump up and say, <laughs> say Jesus uh, loves you, Jesus heals to you, to everyone. And so many people have gone and shared. Sometimes they will just shut my face off. They're like, you know, we don't want Jesus, just get out. You know, it happens. But all these things is a learning. If I had not done that, I would not have understood how to discern, how to go and, uh, you know, share the gospel to people. And then Holy Spirit said, they're still not prepared. He still allows us to go and share that because he, he wants us to know that we are really desperate. If God just shuts us off in the first, he says, okay, until I, unless I tell you to share the word, you don't go share the word, we will get too lethargic. And we will, we will, our mind will still be thinking, what if I had really gone and shared? Our mind will exalt itself about God. And you know, that is what God says. It should be, you should be very careful. Without the wisdom, without the voice of the Holy Spirit being discerned, it is so difficult to live in this world. And when I recently, when I went outside the, the church walls is when I really, you know, had a real tough time how to really discern the voice of God and Holy Spirit. Every time I went to a place, it was my mind talking. It's like, oh, you're not supposed to be here. You're not supposed to be there. And I was like, God, does, is this really you or is this really me? I need to really know the voice of God even more. I need to have a revelation about the word. And then Holy Spirit said, just calm down. Wherever you are, you just believe that you are living in freedom. If you don't have freedom in the spirit, I had practiced that, you know, to live in the uh, freedom, free in the spirit. And when I don't have that calmness in my spirit, when I get agitated, I move out of that place. But sometimes when I go stand in a place, I just take time off and I, I just, you know, ask Holy Spirit, am I in the right place? And then I feel freedom in the spirit. But then my body is reacting because I'm seeing things. Then I said, I shut off my eyes. I shut off the natural eyes. I open up the spiritual eyes. When that happens, I see how God starts moving, you know, and I get the scriptures. I'm like, you know, I open up to a different realm. I don't see the normal realm. I, I just move off into a different realm altogether. I see how God is moving in that place, how he breaks the atmosphere. And this was something I learned when I stepped outside of the church. And, you know, it is like that is called living free in the spirit. Otherwise, we become like walking vegetables. We don't really know. Are we in the right place? We might be reading the word. We might be worshiping. We might be like, you know, very joyful. But somewhere we are going off track if we don't experience that release in the spirit. It's very important for us to know, to, to exercise, to be a spiritual being. That happens only when you have a revelation about God. It's like sometimes I just wake up and, you know, I don't really kneel down and pray. I start talking to God and it goes on for hours. I will not even uh, think what what I'm doing there. I wouldn't even brush my teeth. I would just be sitting on the bed. I would just look outside the window. My spirit is conversation in conversation with God. And I have seen bits and pieces of a vision where I will be answering some kind of a, you know, word. And I, then I will just get up and, you know, go on my daily work. And suddenly I'll be converse, in conversation with a person. And then this visual will come and I know what exactly I need to say. That means God is already showing me the future, who I'm going to meet, what is the word I'm going to share, and how is it that I'm going to share. And it, so many times it's happened. And I've already got the, the vision of the future. Our God is a future God. We don't have to re rely on the past. Like how brother said, we don't have to really turn back to see what is gone ahead. When you're born in the spirit, every day be born. It's not that one day you get baptized and, you know, my experience is gone. Oh my God, that day I got baptized. I didn't really live it again. No, every day, every day is a baptism experience. When you believe that God, today I'm getting into the spirit, not into the real water. It might be, that might be a symbolic of getting into the water. But today for me, getting baptized, getting salvation experiences, I dip into the spirit of God and I say, Lord, I'm dipping into the spirit. I'm opening up myself to the spirit of God. Today is a new day for me to rewrite what I've done wrong and God will definitely give you a chance the moment I say God I want to exercise this and immediately there opens up a chance then you practice every, every day becomes a practice for us and when I was like you know reading about uh, Galatians chapter 4 it talks about we cannot read the entire chapter so I'm just saying it talks about living by law and living by grace you know if you are living by law Paul clearly says I don't mind you not, uh, you know, trying to impress God by living by law. But if you are choosing to live on one side of the law, then you make sure that you fulfill everything. You cannot be cat on the wall. You cannot say, now I'm going to, you know, follow these uh, Ten Commandments. And now I cannot say, oh, I'm free, to, free in the spirit, so I'm going to worship God. And, uh, you know, you, you cannot alter God's word whenever you feel like. 
according to your lifestyle. If I'm altering it, you, I either, either stand by the law completely and live like a Jew or I, I you know, get freedom and I just come and live in grace. You know, to live in grace, it's not a lifestyle where you have an access or you have a guarantee card, to, like, you know, that you are safe and you go on sinning. The word of God clearly says, when you are deciding that you're going to live by grace and immediately what happens is your lifestyle changes and you don't even look unto the lifestyle of sin. That becomes to a version for you. The practice lifestyle, when you practice Holy Spirit in your lifestyle, when, I, when I, I'm living in grace, I've seen so many people, they say I'm living in grace and still, you know, being bound in the addictions. I don't see that that is right because the word clearly says, if you have decided to live by grace, then you don't see anything around you that is capturing you as, you know, as a slave. Because Holy Spirit is not the one who will still allow you to be enslaved. He's the one who is like, you know, a chain breaker. He's the one who is letting you free. Like, I've experienced that. There's so many addictions. Like, you know, when I came out of, like, you know, the worldly stuffs and when I came into the spirit of God, it is like, I don't even turn back to it. That is, the, that is the miracle that happens in you. You are reborn. Like, you know, everything happens new for us. I cannot explain it in words how you get transformed. It is like you are transformed. That is because the Holy Spirit is in you. He doesn't allow you to still sin, you know. It's like when I give my control to a person, like, you know, you take control of my life. Would you, okay, for example, your children for, for that matter, would you allow a, a child when a child comes and says, I feel like murdering someone today. How many of us will encourage and say, yes, please do it, you know. We all will freak out. It's like that, you know, you will go and you will take your time off of everything and you say, what is happening? You will mentor the kid. It's like that, you know. So, Murder is not something where we think that it's a big sin. Every sin is sin for that matter. Even if you look at a person and you curse them, it, it says you're really killing them in the spirit. It is greater than murder. It's like that, you know. Sometimes we, we all freak out. We all go mentor our kids. That's exactly what happens. When I say that, Lord, the sin is trying to come and capture me, I go to the Holy Spirit and I simply say, Lord, you please help me take care of this. And I don't know from where the help comes from. I suddenly get that strength in my spirit. I don't even look at it like it has any importance. I just walk in freedom. And I'm not bound to the law. If I am bound to the law, I better follow everything of what the law says. It's like either that or this. We are all freedom. Like, you know, we are all... We are all free in, in Christ because he died for us. It's simply, it all happens with some one simple concept called belief and faith. You know, when you have faith, I simply believe that when I, when I receive the gift of Holy Spirit, it, all these gifts and the, the, um, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it's like I'm not doing really anything. Fruit means I'm not going and really laying in my ground saying I'm a tree and I'm going to bear fruit. No, it's not like that. It's like, <laughs> it's like you know, I believe the fruit is something where it's reflecting in my character. You know, if I don't have a character change every single day, and I know that I'm not walking with God. Every day when I wake up, I say, Lord, what is that yesterday's I don't want it to carry on today, Lord? Clear off my baggages. Sometimes hidden stuff, you know, gets exposed. And that's where, if you have to cleanse yourself, that's where fasting really helps. When somebody is going through a fasting period, it is not that they are being too righteous. No, fasting actually opens up your spirit and it cleanses you inside out. Uh, God, Jesus said, you know, sometimes fasting allows you to clear off your unbelief. It is not that it casts out demons. No, it not, has nothing to do with demon. It has everything to do with us, our character, our mind, our attitude. When you open up, when you say, Lord, today I'm, it, it has to be led by the Spirit. I cannot say, Lord, I'm going to fast you. Please help me. No, it doesn't happen like that. When you pray and say, Lord, I really want to be cleansed. I don't, I don't know what are the things that is not of the word. When I say that, there was a day when you just get up and you feel full of the Spirit and Holy Spirit leads you in fasting. You are just totally led. You don't feel like eating. You don't even feel like drinking water you're just with the word all throughout the day and then you know that you know holy spirit is leading into the realm where you're getting strengthened in the spirit the more you exercise your spirit nothing of the flesh can manifest in front of you it is like it has nothing to do with you because you walk in the full of the spirit we walk with with the, with the relationship with the holy spirit i've seen that happen it was like it is not because of who i am it is because of who my father is i've given him full access as the as i'm your daughter like do whatever you want with my life god and at times, I can feel the presence of God like a person walking with me. And when we walk in the street, I've seen people really manifest in front of me. <laughs> it, it happened. When I was a new believer, I did not even know what was deliverance. And yes, it, it happened. And all these things, you know, it was not 
I, it really uh, shook me, like, you know, there's so much we have to learn. If something, uh, it's not that that person was possessed. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the bond, bondages in the spirit. You know, they are bound in the spirit. It's not in the flesh. It's in the spirit that they are bound. When a person is set free in the spirit, you can see that they are totally free in natural realm. Because I, I, we as a believer, we are so blessed that, you know, in, it is like if something happens to us, we don't really first run to the doctor. We run to the Holy Spirit. That is because we have a relationship. It is like he gives us that, uh, that immunity in everything. It's supernatural the way he recovers us, the way he gives us that strength. I've seen my friends where, like, you know, even when they cough, sneeze once, gone. They have to run to the doctor. They have to take a medication. For us, it's not like that. I don't even remember when was the last time I took medication because I just run to Holy Spirit. I said, God, this is irritating. For everything for us, it's God because he's our father. Who do we run to? It's a lifestyle for us to run to God. It's a lifestyle for us to dwell in the realm of the spirit. It's a lifestyle for us to dwell in the Holy of Holies. And, you know, freedom in the spirit is everything today. If we cannot live free in the spirit, then it's difficult for us to exercise because we might, it's not we might, we obviously fall to the law and we fall to the, for the, to the practices of this world. We try to please people. That, that's what happens. End of the day, we are like, God, today I'm, I'm feeling low. It's because somebody would have told something to us. Right? That happens to everyone. And when you're with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter, you know. Sometimes when people talk low about you, you just smile and immediately you, you are so busy engaging with the Holy Spirit in conversation. It is like, God, what next? I'm going to this place, so God, I need you. It is like that. You, you don't even give an importance to, to a thing that is trying to manifest in front of you because your fruit of the Holy Spirit is it's maturing every day. And Paul clearly writes, he says, I am having birth pangs because I want to see you that Christ is fully formed inside of you. Fully formed does not take overnight. You know, a, a small baby to be uh, conceived and to be growing for that nine months, it takes patience. Even for us, it's like that. For us to be maturing in the spirit, to be free in the spirit, there are so many chains that we have bound us ourselves with. For us to get out of it, voluntarily we have to do it. It's like God doesn't force us and says, you know, you come out of this, you come out of that. But I go to God and say, Lord, I want to come out of this. That's when I get the complete freedom because I, I want God to, you know, take control of my life and I give him permission to set me free. It doesn't happen like he comes and forces us and says, come on, accept me. Like, otherwise you are going to be, you know, lost in this world. It doesn't happen like that. He's a, he's a sweetheart, you know. It is like he just comes and he says, I'm here to help. If I'm not seeking help, whose mistake is that? It is like the heavens and everything is prepared for me. The fullness is in Christ. If I am not taking the key, it's my problem. I have to deal with my attitude first. That means I am full of pride. The moment somebody says, I don't want God. What is that talking? That is pride talking. The word of, in Proverbs, it clearly says, it's some, when somebody says there's no God, that means he's a fool. Don't even argue with that person because the person watching you both will not understand the difference. That was like, yes, yeah, when I read, see, I did not know that. Otherwise, I would be arguing with someone, you know, literally going to a place where I'm bursting out of my mind to convince God. But what clearly says, don't argue with someone who doesn't even want to be saved because people will not know the difference who is, you know, uh, okay, <laughs> it's like that. So <laughs> when I was reading Galatians, it was so awesome. Every step by step, it is like, you know, he's talking about law and he's talking about living in grace and freedom. And then chapter five, it talks about two different things. He, he also talks about the, the children bound uh, in the law or the descendants of Hagar and the children who are free in the spirit or the descendants of Sarah. They, from day one, like, you know, when God created everything, he's been talking the language of Christ. He's been talking the language of freedom in the spirit. He's been talking about the language of heavenly atmosphere on earth. Not on earth, it's in you, you know. There was a time in the Old Testament when the Ark of the Covenant was outside. People went and worshipped. But after the New Age, after Christ died for us, the Ark of the Covenant is not in some box or it is not in some tent, but it's in your heart. You become the rightful place for God to come and dwell inside. So that takes place, that has to take time to prepare yourself to say, Lord, you come into my heart. I want the ark to be dwelling in my heart. Imagine the, the, the glory of that ark, you know, it's not simple. Somebody in the Old Testament, when they tried to save the ark, that person was, you know, he died on the spot. When it's so important, then it's in Christ what happens is he redeems and he says, you, do, you cannot carry God's presence in your flesh. So what I will do is I'll do that job for you. You simply follow me and you be in my shadow. 
and you're simply walking behind him. You're doing nothing. All you have to do is voluntarily say, Lord, you, I'm giving my life to you, and I, I want you to be the head of everything. I'm going to just walk in your shadow. And everything, God, you know, he gives you wisdom to take decisions. He gives you wisdom to go to a place where he wants you to go. It is like you are doing his job. When he is your, you need to have a rightful, right master, and otherwise you be, become ending up a, like a slave. If you have a right master, he will treat you like a friend. It's, it's happened with me when I have worked with so many people. There are certain people who I worked with just for the sake of money, but certain people I worked with, I did not even bother whether they paid me or not. It's because of the relationship I had with them. It's because they treated me right. It's because they gave me freedom to work. You cannot, a person who is creative, you cannot put them and you cannot uh, put them in a the place and say, this is how you need to work. It's difficult for us to get the idea of their mind and then execute it. But if they say, this is what is in my mind, you know, I want, for example, I'm a head, hairdresser and a makeup artist. So they would just tell me the concept and they'll say, this is what is the concept and this is what I'm trying to get. And I just close my eyes, I try to picture it in my mind and then I would just tell them the idea. Is this how it is going to be? And they'll be like, okay, we get it. Why don't we do a trial? When the trial comes out, I ask Holy Spirit, nothing is in my mind, you know, I am not creative enough. Holy Spirit is so creative that he's created everything. The world is his creation. He is the one who came and manifested. It is through his spirit that everything is in manifestation. I say, Lord, let there be a manifestation of your glory in my work. That's all. And I will just close my eyes. I will see a vision. I will not even know how I'm working. Sometimes I will only know, taking up my tool in my hand, by the end of everything is over, I would be stunned the way it has come out because it's not me. I know I keep telling my uh, managers who I worked with, this is not me, this is God. And they'll be like, you and your God. But end of the day, they had to accept. Because when I'm normal, when I'm sober, I can't even braid a hair. When I was small, I, can't, I could not even do my hair like how Joanna does. She's a pro, you know. If she, if we have been, I'm sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but if we train her, she can excel even above me because she has the skill of moving the hands, you know, it is like that. He, he gives you that skill. He says, you know, I will teach your hand to battle. All these things are not, you're not going for war with, uh, with a different kingdom. Your work itself is a war. When I take my tools, I'm like, Lord, I'm really going like to war and I want you to give me that skill set to handle everything. By the end of it, it's a masterpiece. It's because he is the master over me. So it is like, you know, I've experienced that freedom in the spirit. It is a joy every day to, ex everything becomes a challenge. It's like, oh my, today is a, this is how it is. How am I going to handle? Lord, I want to know you in that, in that situation. It becomes like, how do I explore God in that situation? You know, for me, it, is, it has been three years that I'm struggling to open a salon. Every time something happens, but off late, th this year in the beginning, God spoke to me and he said, that is because you're struggling to get things done and you, you are like, you, you believe that, you know, God is working, but you're struggling. It is your effort that you're trying to do. You're going to get contacts. And he said, if you cannot rest, I cannot work. And that line, was like I, I was reading face to face with God with uh, what Bill Johnson said. It was so beautiful. He says, Holy Spirit cannot rest upon something that is that does not have rest. I am jumping around and I'm so agitated. How can a dove come and rest upon my shoulder? That was the picture. He said so beautifully he demonstrated. He said, the dove is the sensitive of all birds. You know, even when you move faster, it just flies away. If that is sitting on your shoulder. That's why the Holy Spirit had to descend on him like a, like a dove, you know, it's very sensitive. If I have a dove on my shoulder, how am I going to work my day out? I have to be so full of patience. I have to be so sensitive, so sharp. And I, I need to make sure I don't hurt the dove. When it takes flight, it doesn't come back again. So Holy Spirit is like a dove. He's so tender. Give him importance. You say, Lord, today you are going to teach me how to excel in this problem. So every problem has become a journey for me to excel higher because I've seen God the way he's manifested. Today, there can be no problem that can come and say like, I'm going to take you away from God. The scripture, I have exercised those scriptures. I, I used to pray these scripture which says, there can be nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Nothing on earth, nothing in heaven, nothing, nothing, nothing. There can be nothing. Because I said, Lord, I want to go to that place where really experience and say, nothing can separate me. If something comes in between and says, you have to leave your God and follow this. I say, chuck off boss, it's not happening. There are so many projects I've canceled is because it's not godly. They have asked so many projects where the, you know, money is like, you know, how the industry is. The money is in abundance. They will say, we will pay you this. We will pay you that. 
I'll just sit and pray. I say, God, do I really take up this project? And immediately, Holy Spirit will, most of the time, it's no. It's because the industry is like that. We don't blame anybody else because the industry is like that. And I'm like, OK, until you say, yes, I am going to be happy. I'm going to worship you. I am full of freedom. And if you, like, you know, in every day's life, the challenge is what has happened. If I had to be sulking, I am definitely I would have committed suicide long back because it's it's depressing when you want to do something and somebody stops you from doing it and then everybody questions what happens. You are talking about this, and now I'm like, I'm free. I don't know. Holy Spirit is is asking me to stay calm. There is a time of silence. I'm going to be in silence. If he's giving me the job, then I'm going to work for him. He wants. He's my boss. If he wants me to work for him, he's going to open up everything for me. He's going to set up the place. I'm just going to be a labor in that place. So I came to that conclusion because earlier it was like, God, give me a salon. Because I, I did not understand. It was a wrong prayer. I was trying to be the boss of myself. You know, it doesn't work like that. And I said, Lord, give me your place. I want to work for you. That was a different prayer. And that really made so much sense to me. Since then, there's something that happened in my heart that, you know, everything is changing. It, it's not that when, only when he gives me my heart's desire, I'm going to love God. That's why he doesn't give most of the times. Because some, we get tuned that when we ask God and we give something, and then we believe in God. Our faith rises when we, our needs are met. That is when he says, I don't want you to know me because your needs are met. I want you to know me when your needs are not met. So that's why he says, it's like, you know, keep working harder. Because I want you to know me in every situation. And Personally, I have told, I've experienced that I would be saying is, uh, you know, seek God as a last resort. Why am I saying this? Why, am, why not as a first resort? Because I want you to try every way possible. I'm sure everything will fail. It's only the last resort. God is the only possible, then that's the only chance that will work out. So for me, it happened, you know, he allowed me to do every other possible way. If I had not experienced that today, that might have not been my message. I would not have had a revelation about him. And I said, Lord, now my last resort is you. You know, so I'm saying everybody, don't try God for now. Try everything else. I'm sure you will fail. If you are challenging and if you're saying, oh, I would have done this even without God. It's simple. I'm sure it will not happen. Try him as a last resort. And then you will understand that he is the controller of everything. And that's what it says in Galatians, you know? When you're living by grace, he gives you the power, he gives you the right attitude, he gives you the right character. He talks about freedom in the spirit. It's like how you, the fruit of the spirit matures. Only then Christ is formed. So it is like, first you have salvation, then you have the spirit of God. In the spirit of God, you have the fruit, and then you have the gift, and then you have the seven spirits of God. Then Christ is formed inside of you. It's a process. You know, overnight when I have, I dip inside the water and I'm like, I have the seven spirits of God. It's not like that because it's the spirit of God. If you're hosting the sp spirit of God, that means you have gone through a process. And today, if, if people are working, uh, demonstrating the manifestations of God, then imagine the, the hours of dedication they've gone through. Imagine the process they've gone through. Hats off to them. So it's, like, it's, it's easy for us to weigh around and, you know, judge a person, but it takes a minute to sit with the Spirit of God to understand what they have gone through. So it is like, you know, it's, it's a process. I would encourage each one of you, like, when you're reading the word, ask Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Otherwise, it's just the word. It remains as logos. It can never be a rhema word. But when a rhema word hits you, it's like, you know, it keeps on going forever. You cannot leave the word and you cannot just rest in peace without eating the bread. Because when you get addicted to God, no, I've never met even a person who is told, I have had enough of God. I'm done with God. No. The more you have an uh, open encounter with God, it is like the more you get hungry, the more you want to go into his presence, the more you want to learn about him, the more you want to be transformed. Then you, you stop becoming people pleasers. You start becoming God pleasers. It's a, both are to totally different ways. Sometimes Holy Spirit is, is like, you know, he will ask you to do things where people will not approve. It is, it's, it is like that. Sometimes he will say, go to this person and don't talk about God. Just go and talk to them for sometimes. And I don't know, answers will just flow out. And the way you would, you would have counseled them, they would really be refreshed. End of the day, you wouldn't have talked anything about God. But you would have still given the message about God to them. That's because it's wisdom. 
Wisdom is in operation. Holy Spirit is different. We cannot, con we cannot say to God, like, today I'm going, Lord, today I'm in a full mood to go share the gospel. Like, you know, I'm going to preach the gospel to even at least 10 of them in the street. I'm sure you, you will not have the courage to even preach to one because Holy Spirit is not with us. But the day when the Spirit of God is with us, you don't have to preach God. They will come getting attracted to you. It's like the magnetic force, you know. They will want to come and say, there's something about you. There is something about you. I've heard this several times. There's something about you. It's not because it's who I am. I'm covered with the presence of God. It's because I am not a slave. I am a daughter of God. You know, to come to that understanding, to walk in that authority, it is a years of practice to know your father. Unless and unless you know your father, you cannot say, like, I'm your daughter. Because there will be something inside of you to say, am I really worthy? You know, when, when that, is op that is an operation. I'm still living in some kind of a bondage. I am free to say I am the daughter of God. And if you don't have the freedom, then you go and practice God. You ask the Father, am I free to go and stand in public to say I am the daughter of God? I'm still not a slave. I'm being redeemed. Because every day is a salvation experience for us. Every day is a walking in the spirit. If you become the mantle. Then at end of the day, it is like you don't go to receive mantles or impartations. You become the impartation. When you go into a place, it breaks the atmosphere. It breaks the circumstances. And you know, sometimes I, I like what Ronika says, you know, my smile has to, you know, bring the presence of God. It is so true. Why can't it be? If you're full of God, when you are smiling, it is not you. It is God who's smiling on the, that person. I'm sure everybody would have had that experience. When you go and just hug a person, you would see some, sometimes they'll, they'll be happy, they'll be uh, laughing around. But you know, Holy Spirit will say, just go hug that person. When you hug, they will start breaking down and they'll cry. A, a second before they were laughing, a second later they're crying. What is it then? Because you touch the spirit. You don't touch them in the realm of the flesh. You don't touch them in the realm of the natural, but you're touching in the spirit. So be a person dominated by Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Every challenge, you know, take it to God. Every challenge, every circumstances, move it to God. It's like, God, today I'm living in this spirit realm. How do I, how do I speak to this person? Don't speak to anyone. For, you know, for hours together because the word of God clearly said, I stopped doing that, you know. There were times when I would just go on talking and talking because I'm my profession is like that. I would just go on talking and talking. But then, you know, when I started reading Probs, it says, don't talk wide words, which is not building them in the spirit. Don't even have a conversation because you are accountable for every word you're going to speak. So I was scared. I said, Lord, I've spoken so much. How do I redeem that? <laughs> How do I fix that? He said, every day is a salvation experience. You're not a walking vegetable anymore. You're led by the spirit. Go dip inside the spirit of God. Renew yourself every day. Every day is now. And because there's the word of God clearly says, now there is no condemnation. Every season, every second is now for me. Now if I've done something, I go now to redeem myself in the blood of Jesus. And I say, Lord, I want to have a covenant with you I want to be in communion with you like I redeem it again and again and again because God is a God of eternity he doesn't go back he always goes into the future so let us all put it to practice and let us go again and read Galatians 4 and 5 is what I was you know trying to uh, touch on you know the 3 4 and 5 I wanted to speak but then I've touched the most of the topics I didn't want to read the word because it's like too much to read but it's it's more about than reading the word, it's more about the revelation. It's more about how we live our lifestyle. So I'm sure everyone has a way of living with God, a, a, a testimony about how you're having a journey with God. But if without the spirit of God, without the spirit of freedom, it is like it, it, can, it cannot help us. It cannot take us anywhere. So every word that does not bring freedom, that brings condemnation, that means you are not reading with the Holy Spirit. And I remember Bill Johnson saying, if you're not reading the word of God with Holy Spirit, you will end up dying because the word can kill you. Even pastor says that. If you are reading the word of God without Holy Spirit, you will end up dying because the word is so sharp. If the Holy Spirit is there, that means you're already convicted. You're already saved. He's already protecting you. And he's already allowing you to see what would have happened if he was not the revelation that is covering you. You are being exposed into the, in the world these stuff where the challenges are difficult. But with Holy Spirit, everything becomes an experience. Everything becomes a testimony. And I'm giving glory to God for what he spoke today because even if that is a revelation even to me. I only had the word freedom in the spirit and don't be a walking vegetable. And today I know this, every situation, you can turn it up.